All right, so you're gonna weigh out the sodium borohydride. You need 80 milligrams of 0 0.08. Point oh eight four is, as they say, good enough for government work. So we have our flask over our stir plate. It is stirring. You can see the white stir bar going in the bottom. We're going to add our sodium borohydride. All right, so we added our sodium borohydride. We're going to take the spatula, scrape a little bit of excess with the agents in there. Now we want to add our ethanol. It'll be a little cloudy. We're going to give this a few minutes to stir to uh, dissolve the solid and make sure that all that solid is dissolved and in solution. And then we'll add our aldehyde. So let's we'll stir for a bit. So as you can see, most of our solid has dissolved. So now we're just going to add our aldehyde. Here's where you're going to have to figure out how much I'm adding. I'm going to add the aldehyde. And then this is going to stir for a bit. And we'll check it with TLC to see if it's finished here in a little while. All right, so we need to do the TLC for this to see if the reaction is done. So we use a TLC plate. Right, it has two sides. It's got like the... The, the doll side that has the silica on it, and it has a, a shiny plasticky side. So we want to write on the doll side. You want to try to do your best not to touch it. And you want to take a pencil and go along the bottom to give yourself a starting line. You don't want to push too hard because you can uh, cut the silica. And we're going to have starting material, which is going to be our aldehyde, a co-spot, which is going to be our... Uh, both a reaction and our starting material. And then we're going to have our reaction over here. So I've got a vial of starting material. It's a little bit of the aldehyde dissolved in ethanol. I'm going to use a TLC spotter, which is just a thin piece of, oh, you know, camera here, a thin piece of glass. Right, you can see, if I can get it to focus, uh, there is liquid in it. So when I touch it to the silica, you'll see the, the TLC plate will change color because it'll get wet. So now I've deposited some of the starting material onto the TLC plate. I'm going to do the same thing on the coast box. Now I cleaned the spotter and I dipped it into the reaction. So now I have reaction solution in there. I'm going to put it on the R for reaction. Transfer some of the reaction. And I'm going to put it on the C for co-spot. And now I'm going to develop this in a TLC chamber. So we've got our TLC chamber. We've got a wick in here. And then uh, that's to help suck up the solvent. So we're going to add the solvent. 10 mLs, 7 mLs of hexane, 3 mLs of ethyl acetate. We want to get our wick wet. So the point of the wick is the solvent goes up and evaporates off of it and not off of the TLC plate. Put a watch glass over it to let that the vapors kind of build up a bit. Then we're going to add our TLC plate. We're going to add it on the opposite side from the wick, like this. Usually you're going to want to have the, the silica side facing in. And then that's going to work its way up, and I'll show you the finished result here in a second.
for the TLC plates developed. You can see I put a line where uh, the solid made up to, and there's really nothing to see. But if you put it under a UV light, you will see that the spots that correspond to the various compounds will show up on the TLC paper. So now you can see uh, if the reaction has been completed or not. So I'll let you determine if it has. So to be able to see the spots after you are, uh, you take it out from underneath the UV lamp, you will circle the spots with a pencil. So now that the reaction is complete, we have to quench the reaction. So I've put it in an ice bath for like 10 minutes to cool down. So now I'm going to add one molar HCl to the reaction slowly to quench it. So quenching just means that any excess reagent that is present in the reaction will be consumed. So it is no longer reactive. And there it's quenched. And next up we do an extraction. All right, so we have our separatory funnel set up. I'm gonna add our solution that we just quenched. Uh, when you pour it in, right, there's still the stir bar in there. You wanna make sure you don't pour the stir bar in. You wanna be careful about that. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but it just makes your life a little bit easier. And then we're going to extract it with methylene chloride, also known as dichloromethane. Then we're going to extract it with dichloromethane. So, um, so there's not an amount given. This is where you just kind of go with, you want to have a good layer in your separatory funnel so that you can easily separate them. So if you pour it in there, right, you're going to see at the bottom, you're gonna have a layer form. And that's pretty easy to see. And so that's enough dichloromethane. You just need to make sure you have an easy to see layer in your set model. So here you're going to remember, cap it, you're gonna flip it over, what a vent by turning the stock off, shake it up a little bit, make sure the layers mix, vent it, flip it over again, and then those layers are going to separate out and you can watch the the two liquids that aren't miscible separate into two layers our bottom layer is our dichloromethane layer layer it's more dense so we're going to drain that out And we want to do our best to not get any water or minimize the amount of water that we get. And you can see there are bubbles falling down of more methylene chloride. So just give that a second to kind of settle up. We want to take the rest of that. There you go. So then we'll do the same thing again. I'm going to rinse out our flask. Methylene chloride. Add that so I have a good layer. And then shake it up again. Then take off the cap and let the layers separate.
will drain out the bottom layer. And with that first uh, extract that we had, right, one more time. The general rule of thumb is you want to do three extractions because if you think that like each time you do an extraction, you get 90% of your stuff, you get 90% the first time, then you get 90% of the 10% that's left, so you got 99% of what you started with, and then you get 90% of the 1%, and so you have 99.9% .9 of your stuff. So you don't have to worry about losing anything. So that's why it's better to do three smaller extractions and then instead of just one big one. Shake, vent, and then there we go. One more. We'll drain this out and we'll have our product. And with dichloromethane, it should have just a little bit of water in it that we need to remove from the drying agent here in a second. So we're gonna add, use a drying agent. So sodium sulfate is this loose powder here. It's a focus. Right, we're gonna add that to our solution and it will help pull some of the water up. So you see how it's like turbid and not clear. And we're gonna swirl this around and the way you can tell if it's dry is not by looking at the solution, but by looking at the solid, right? So you want your solid here to be, it clumps up when there's water present. It will keep clumping until all the water is gone. And you have this, you have a, the clumps plus like a free flowing solid. So that was about 1.13 grams. I'm gonna need to add a little bit more to get this fully dry. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I've got about five grams here, I'm not gonna add all of it. I'm just gonna add some. And what we're looking for is we're looking for when we swirl it, if we see loose particles. And we're a little bit better, where you can kind of see that it, pick it up here. You can kind of see that it moves around nicely. So that should probably be good. So now we have to filter off the solid and then evaporate the liquid. All right, so now I have to filter off that solid to get it away from uh, the dichloromethane and my product. So I'm gonna use gravity filtration. So I've got my three weighed 50 ml beaker. I've got a glass funnel and I have a piece of filter paper that I folded into quarters. So it's kind of a little cone shape and fits in there nicely. I'm just going to take my solution with my solid in it and I'm going to carefully pour it into the funnel and let it drain down and do that until I've removed all of the solid. So we've got the solid in the, in the funnel now, and we are like running the last of our solution through it. We want to try to rinse it with a little bit of dichloromethane to make sure we wash any of our compound that may be mixed up in the uh, solid out of the solid. So, I'm going to add a little bit here. And then that will rinse through. And once that's done uh, filtering, we're going to just uh, carefully evaporate the solid of the solution so that we're left with the oil product in the bottom of the beaker. So, all right, I've got the dichloromethane in the beaker on a hot plate. I've got the heat on relatively low because dichloromethane has a pretty low boiling point. And so we're going to drive the dichloromethane off of the or out of the beaker and leave us with the oil product. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse so you can watch this because you know you're gonna literally watch a pot boil. And when it's done, we'll get the masses for you.
So you can see here that all the liquid's gone, and I have this thin, like, oil in the bottom. Once this cools, I'm going to weigh it, and that'll be the mass of our product. And so here is the mass of the beaker plus the solid. And we should be good.